Gamers, gals, non-binary pals, and fellow drama frogs alike, welcome to the greatest story time on planet Earth, where I want to talk to you how I got invited to go to the Bushy Road Championship Series by Bushy Road themselves, and how I lost $1,500 in a single hour. Let's get into it. <laughs> so basically, a couple of months ago, I was playing white shorts with my friend. I made a funny little tweet. I was like, fuck Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm about to go off. He's playing red, I'm playing yellow. We're playing some silly little white shorts. You know, it's fun. It's a fun experience. And then the tweet gets picked up by the marketing executive at Bushiro. The marketing, one of their head marketers is like, hey, Stevie, like we really like your tweet. Uh, do you want to help make some content for us? And I'm like, yes, that'd be amazing. Like, you know, it's always cool to work with companies with games that you like. And I'm like a big fan of White Shorts. I don't really play it. I don't really play Vanguard, but I do collect a lot of White Shorts. After a lot of back and forth, they sent me an email that said, like, Dear Stevie, we're happy to invite you to the World Championship Series, and we would love to give you media passes to come over and, you know, like, watch the event, make some content, all that sort of deal. I left that email in my inbox for two weeks without ever responding to it. <laughs> so, that was the first problem. <laughs> that was the first problem. Things went a little bit wrong. Two weeks before the, the event started, I got a message update from them, and they were like, Stevie, are you coming? Like, are you, do you want to come or not? Because it's like, last call. I'm like, oh, fuck. All right, now or never. So I messaged them, I was like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll go, I'll go, go, whatever. They get back to me, and they're like, all right, sick. We'll put aside the media passes, hear all the details. And then I'm looking at flights, I'm looking at hotels, I'm looking at whatever, and I'm realizing, damn, this shit's a little expensive. Who would have guessed that it's a little bit expensive to try and book a trip only with like two weeks advance? So I messaged them back. I'm like, hey, Sean, can you do me a favor and ask the media team if you guys can pay for our accommodation and flights. And Sean messages me, messages me back, and he says no. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> so, me and Chris, we're like panicking last minute. And Sean's like, hey, are, like, are you guys able to go if we're not able to accommodate you? So I messaged Sean again, and I'm like, please, if you could ask again, uh, or you could do something, like literally just anything. You could find anything anywhere in your guys' budget, ask the marketing, ask the accommodations, ask the directorial, ask the production thread, I don't care. Just try and make it happen. They get a message the next day. And Sean says, all right, the marketing team says we'll give you the cash to fly out. And I'm like, yes, fucking skamas. So the only other person I know who like actually likes Weiss is Chris and Adrian. And Adrian didn't have work off that day. So I was like, fuck it, Chris, it's our time to shine. We get to the airport. Chris gets there before me because I like getting to airports late because I'm a, I'm a terrible person. I, I literally used to go to airports like 30 minutes before my flight took off. I remember there was like one instance where at Santa Barbara, I got to the airport 10 minutes before my flight was supposed to take off. Not bored, take off. So anyways, Chris gets past security and he's like in. And I maybe get there like 30 minutes after Chris. And I'm like, all right, Chris, I'm on my way. I'm getting through TSA. And then, boom, I get pulled aside. My bag gets searched and I get pulled over to be patted down and randomly searched. If you don't know, there are little scanner, there are little scanner pods where like the airports will make you like raise your hands and like the little swivel magnetic thing will basically scan you for any abnormalities. The way how they do it, they have a prompt for male or female. And if they pick female, and you're a guy, or you have guy bits, what can happen is your cock will show up as an unrecognized, uh, it'll show up in the scan. <laughs> Basically, they scanned me as a female, and they re they saw my cock. The, the, this, this cock be swinging. They're like, um, excuse me ma'am, can you please step aside? We need, to, we need to search you. And I literally look them in the eye, I'm like, did you scan me as a girl? And they're like, yeah. And then they put me back through, scan me as a guy, immediately green lights and I'm, they're just like all right you're good then i go to baggage claim because they scan your bags and whatever and then boom my bag is lit up like red alarm bells are flying they're just ringing everywhere and i'm like god fucking damn it am i gonna get pulled over again they look at me they're like can you please step aside we need to investigate your bag then it turns out because i have a lot of drugs in my bag <laughs> not like hard drugs but it's because i had i brought like tylenol and like melatonin and like Pepto-Bismol. <laughs> so they had to like test everything in my bag. <laughs> After like they ransacked it, they're like, whatever. All right, thank you for coming by. And we get onto the plane. We get onto the plane, 
no issues. And it's a fun night. It's a fun Friday night. We drop our shit off at the hotel. We go to Korean barbecue with Chris's friend Joy. It's super nice. So then we get to the event. And the event is super cool. I get to meet a lot of players. A ton of people actually came up and said like hi to me. I have like a nice little Twitter thread. Gotta meet like a lot of uh, Weiss people. And surprising about a Yu-Gi-Oh people. What's really funny is when I was walking with Chris into the event venue, I was like, Chris, like, I guarantee you, like, this is gonna be a chill event. I don't have to worry about being recognized. I don't have to worry about, you know, like, people, like, crowding me. Literally, the second I walk through the door, the second a white guy turns around, looks at me, Yo, are you Stevie Blunder? And then, it's him, Maxime Solemn. Solemn Yu-Gi-Oh, or Solemn Vanguard. And I'm like, holy shit, is that you? <laughs> Which is crazy. Like, the man literally immediately fucking saw me. Solemn, super cool. Even though know, we chatted for a bit. And I was like, surely this will be the only time this happens. But it happened again, and 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 again. By the way, this guy is literally the official commentator for White Schwartz events. Like, this man is literally like contracted with Bushy Road, and he recognized me. I'm like, oh my god, am I popular? <laughs> it's really surprising. Like, I don't consider myself, I consider myself like a tiny fucking content creator. It's kind of crazy, like, people recognize me. Like, I don't, like, it's, it's, it's really surreal. And also, I felt extremely clouded. So after we met, met everyone, we took a bunch of pictures, started talking to people. We were like, all right, let's go vendor stuff. So we go to the vendor hall, and we basically decide to juice our binders. And our binders are pretty nice. We have, like, a good amount of SPs, we have a good amount of SSP, signed cards, scold rares, rare bulk, whatever. Because me and Chris don't actually really play the game. We just like to collect it. And because it's better than open fucking Yu-Gi-Oh product. Yu-Gi-Oh product, you pull a secret rare, it's even, like, $15 or, like, $70. You pull a white short secret rare, that's a free $150 minimum. Which is, like, absolutely insane. We juice all of our stuff. And I get about $800. And Chris gets about $400. And we get this all in cash, by the way. Not a PayPal transaction, cash. So I get a fat stack of hundreds and twenties. I put that shit into my wallet. My wallet can't even close properly. Like, I felt so rich. I don't even have to worry about, like, the Uber costs, the food costs. Like, we're balling. And that is the last moment in the trip where we have money. <laughs> so Chris and I, we go to the vendor booth. And we see them selling sealed product and we get it in our minds to get it twisted turns out getting it twisted is not a very financially sound decision we see booster boxes after booster boxes after booster boxes and they're all pretty good prices me and chris are like all right you know what we could fuck with that you guys don't know how pull rates for white schwartz works basically for every case of 18 boxes you get Three of them will have a signed card, and signed cards are worth a lot of money. If you want an idea of how much money, when you go for this set and search by high to low, the most expensive card is $700. So even if you get like a relatively lower rarity like signed card, it's still, you know, like a free $150. You have a one in, but basically you have a one in six chance of pulling a super duper rare card. And the guy told us that the case that they opened was relatively fresh. They only one SP had been pulled, which is basically one of the signed cards. And there were two SPs left in the in the case and they had 10 boxes left. And we're like, we're getting a pretty good deal on these. It's only like $50 and me and Chris are like, you know, we're gonna be pulling these two at a time. We have at least a 20% odds between the two of us. We should pull one within like, uh, you know, within like, two or three pulls and you know after that we could just you know stop and even if we don't break even it's fine because this is all excess profit right <laughs> well not every box is built the same the reason why the set i'm showing you is worth a lot even for stuff that isn't signed is because this is a meta set for a set that isn't as popular, such as Danmachi, some of your signed cards can be on the lower side. It's a bit rough. <laughs> so me and Chris are like, you know, even if we don't pull the highest rarity SP, it's fine because this is all profit money. Me and Chris, we pull a box, nothing. We pull another box, nothing. We pull another box, nothing. We pull another box, nothing. 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 We are eight boxes deep into the 10 boxes that they said they have left, and we have not pulled a single SP. And there are two. And by the way, each one of these boxes, they're selling to us for $55. So we're $440 in the hole. But hypothetically, 
we could still come up positive, right? We pull our last two boxes. I pull Advisor of the Labyrinth Exploration, Alina, and City 7 Maven Seer out of Chris's box. We came away with $100 of SPs after spending five to $600, and we feel fucking burned. I felt so pissed. The worst part is, it wasn't like they were trying to like hide the SP boxes. They were letting us pick out of the box itself. So it was so it was just it was just wrong from every side of the equation. And then it all goes downhill. I start pulling for Kaguya-sama. I pull eight boxes of Kaguya-sama. Nothing. Forty boxes each a pop. I pull six boxes of Azure Lane. Boom. Burned. By the way, each box of Agilene, $75 a pop. And I go to another structure deck display. Boom. Burn. $110 down the drain. I go to Don Machi. Boom. Burned again. Another $200 burned. I lose so much money in a single hour. I check my wallet. I have no more cash. I went from having $800 up to like $100. Like the rest is just like leftover 20s that I just personally had. It literally would have taken me more time to go outside the event hall, find an ATM, withdraw $800, find gasoline and a lighter, and to burn that money than it took for me to fucking just lose it all in just opening sealed product. I got it twisted. And I got twisted. And me and Chris, between us, we lost about $1,500 in just the world's worst gambling. So I sit there super fucking defeated. I felt like vomiting. I felt like I got punched in the gut. <laughs> what happened, Stevie? I got burned on like $700. I feel like a shell of a man. And I'm not even sure if I can sell the bulk. Well, the bulk. Look at my face. Look at this face. I, I look like I just fucking saw my family get slaughtered in front of me. I felt like crying. I legitimately do not carry cash with me on person anymore because of this. I refuse to have cash in the wallet. Because when you have cash in the wallet, your mind is like, I have the cash on me right now, so how could I lose it? The stack is so big, and you don't notice until you're like halfway through, and the wallet looks so tiny, and you're like, I have to get it back to big. And then it gets tinier, and then, you're, and then it's empty. It was an awful experience from the gambling side. But yeah, the event was amazing. They gave us a bunch of these promo stamped cards. You can see like the Chainsaw Man, there's like Team Avatar, uh, like Vanguard, Weiss. It's absolutely amazing. We got a little egg and they're stamped with the BCS. But they also gave us a prize card. And the prize card was only given to players who were actually playing in the event. You, could, you couldn't get it just for like attending you had to actually qualify and play in the World Championship Series. We got this. This is gonna, This is my first card I've like slabbed up. It is, you can see it right there, how it's got like the World Championship stamp right there, the gold foil for Abyss Kobayashi's Dragon Bait. I love it. So huge shout outs to Bushy Road for inviting us out. Huge shout outs to Matt, the intern, and Sean, uh, for just being super super nice and accommodating and just letting us getting away with so much stuff uh, And letting us film letting us make a bunch of content letting us josh around and it was an absolutely like magical experience Except for the part <laughs> where I got it twisted and lost it all So yeah, be sure to subscribe like check out the streams on twitch and yeah, see ya